1993 Kawasaki Bayou 220 electric start, reverse, shaft drive, fresh oil change, new gas gauge, new starter clutch bearing, new starter gear, new starter. Start it with electric start, turn the key forward, choke it if you like. Go release the pressure from the motor. Starter, you can't start with all the pressure. And then push the button. There you go. Turn it off. That's it. Electric start. Also has a manual pull start. Turn the key on. There it is. I can do it with one hand. Right up. Today I'm gonna change out the starter clutch. And it looks like starting with an eight millimeter. Need to fairly loose to begin with. started them already. So I'll pull this pull start off first. And this is a Kawasaki Bayou 220. KLF 220 is the model. Two wheel drive, four stroke shaft drive. The starter is acting like this. Assume it's the clutch inside there. I have got to replace my clutch and gasket. I'll show you what this looks like once I get the pull start off. So there were four nut or bolts holding it on, and just this one is the long one. The rest of them are short, as you can see. Once the bolts are removed, this just falls away. Let me shimmy it out of there. This is what you get. There's your pull start. There's a 20E23 something number. I'll probably clean this up and give it a paint job. Make it look new. And paint the heads of those bolts. But this is what we're left with here. Drop this bolt out. Get behind here. So my next step is to take off these next bolts again with an eight millimeter. Oh, that's always the last spot. Eight millimeter. So there's one here, one here, two, three, four, five. I believe that's it. Maybe this guy, six. I don't think so though. Um, once that's done, well, before that, I'm gonna take this guy out. And that is a 14 millimeter. And I'm gonna give it a whirl, something like this. Lock it from spinning with the screwdriver. And I'll show you that. And supposedly inside this thing, there's a key, a little pin. So don't lose that once I pull this bolt out. So I pull that out and take this off. As this slides out, there should be a key inside there. I think before you get too far, there's a key on this one. You remove, remove these five bolts and then the clutch inside there 
as you pop that up with a clutch puller. There's a could be a key on that one as well. I could show you what I had to do. Mine was a little bit stubborn. So I took my jack stand, I stood on that, and then I, I got it to go with all that torque. It broke free. So as you can see, this is coming out nice and easy now. And when you get your gear puller, clutch puller, you can put this back in, and press against this bolt so you don't break your threads. That looks nice. And hopefully this wiggles out now, but there should be a key inside there, so don't. I don't know if you can see it, but you might be able to see it there. I can't tell through the camera. There's a key. See it? Don't lose that. Remember how it goes in there. There's a slot. You can kind of see it. That's how that goes back together. All right, we're gonna get a little more high tech. With this here looks like we got a eight millimeter again. one they're probably gonna be different sizes if you remember this one's connected to the got some power or something grounded to it same size as the other one exact same size One. Oops, I didn't have that on camera. But two bottom ones are long ones. Oh, we got one here. We got one, two, three, four, five. This is supposed to break free. I'm not going to be able to do that with my camera. So I'll take that off and show you what it looks like afterwards. And actually, another one down here. You can remember how that goes. I don't think there's any more. There's six. So that guy there, I think that's your verse. That's 10 millimeter. assembly out and set it aside. I'm just doing that one by hand. I broke it free. Can I remember which one this is? Oh, it's just a little guy. The smallest one. Rolls. And this must just pop off. Back side there. So there's one more on the back side. But that one just sits on the front. You can see it. So it's gonna drop it down. So once you get this pulled off, you got one more takeoff on the back side. So there was the seventh one. Can't really see here in the dark. Probably do better tomorrow. Went right out. There's this guy. 
One, two, three long ones, three short ones, and a real stubby one. Now this thing should work free. Well, like I said, I have to do it with two hands. Turns out you probably want to have an oil pan down there. Yeah. Anyways, got these two little guys off here. Get that off. I wonder if you can unclip it, but I don't think you can. There's your, I think that's Strider. I'm not really sure. This thing probably needed a new gasket anyways. I don't think it has a gasket on it, to be honest. So, got some cleaning up to do. Um, get that off, set it aside, and tomorrow I'll get a clutch puller and pull this guy off. And then we can change out the part. So I just put my two screws back in there so I remember which ones are which, but Here's a better look at this guy. So this one probably has a key too. There's your starter. Coming from the other side, you'd have to remove some oil lines to get at that guy. This gear should just come out. Yep. Sorry. Yep, this comes out. Nothing special about this guy. Just floats in there. That side. This one should turn freely that way, stop the other way, which it does. So we're really going to see what's going on once we get back here. Let's see. Gasket cleanup to do. Yeah, looks pretty clean. Hopefully it's, that's just what it is. So far, I don't think so. Because this is working. It stops every time, but maybe something else is going on. Uh, I'll start it now, but see how it goes tomorrow. Gonna buy a clutch puller and pop that off. So it's a new day, and $24 later. The Harper's Freight and got three, four, and six inch puller. Before I do that, I don't know where to pull this bearing off. That's not a mistake. But we'll see afterwards. So I'm putting this back on so I can put the puller on. Just take a mental note prior to doing this. So you, well, so you don't break the threads putting that on. But I haven't taken it off yet. And there's that slides about almost a quarter of an inch back there. So be aware that that. When you go back to put that together, that there's some play. It's probably so it can freewheel. That's what you need to do with one hand. So I thought I'd try this here on video. So this is an Allen. Six. Or nine, I can't tell. Anyways, other two come out pretty good. Not too shabby. So take your Allen bolts out. Reveal the mess. So that's kind of what's wrong with mine. They're all not free. It so probably could have just put that back together but I'm not gonna put the new one in. So there's those two and the third one. Sorry. There's those two and the third one. All three of them are out. So those are just springs inside there. It's kind of a bear to get in. So you, should get, you gotta compress two to get the one in but anyways hopefully you don't have to do that. Now I'll stick the new one on. Here's the new one. They do pop out pretty easy, so be careful and put it on the right way. It does come with another gear, but I'm not doing the gear. So that's what I had to stuck the new one on. Just be very careful. So that's the downside. So 
So when you just kind of hold it with your fingers over the thing, over the bearings and where those round things are, and stick them on there slowly. So that they come to new gear. I'm not going to change that up. And then I just drill the back down on. Well, probably have to not film this one because I need two hands. But there is a key right there. Hopefully that stays in place. It's washer and there's a gear. Excited, it's almost put it back together. So this key is just a little half moon sitting in there. And this is just free wheels. I believe. I'll show you this right here. Quick. Let's slide this key out. I I put the whole clutch thing on here. And uh just to see what was behind here. Well, this thing is kind of really wet. It popped out once already, but not the easiest to get out. It's probably a good thing. Anyways. Anyways, this chain back there stuff. But I believe this is only supposed to go one direction. So I'm gonna put this a bit before I put it back together. So a lot of back and forth. Anyways, I got that key out, so just push it down and out the opposite side. It came out pretty easy. That's what that looks like behind there. So it looks pretty clean. I decided to put the new gear on. So this is the new one. And there's nothing really to stop it from not going both directions, so I don't know if I'm missing something, but seems all right. Here's that washer. Everything's on there. And I'll show you that key. So don't lose that guy. I don't know where you'd find another one. That's kind of important. So my oil pan, I actually put the plug in it so it doesn't fall inside. Put that on and then I'll take a rubber hammer and pound that sucker on. Or look before I put it all back together. Gear, washer, key. Like I said before, I stuck this on and turned it to get that vertical. I think that that key will be able to line up a little easier. And off we go. So I got it back on there with the bearing. Bearing a little tight to get on, so I took this gear and put it on that way and hit it with the rubber hammer to knock it down. But it's pretty free inside there now. This is a little... So that goes just about there. All right, so I had to pull that bolt out because I forgot all about this. That bolt comes out because this has to go on and it has a key inside of it, which holds this guy on. But I gotta put a gasket on first. I got, and it is part number, Sorry, can't see. 091-KA10901-00. So I'll be putting that on after I clean up this old gasket off this guy, the razor blade. And I'll come back after I get the gasket on, put that up in place, and I'm ready to mount it. You'll probably see it after all that's done. I don't think you need to see that. But yeah, come back in a few, probably 10 minutes. So all I did next was put this gear back in, which isn't too bad, you know, it just falls right out, just kind of wiggle it in there. Alright, so I got all the gasket scraped off the razor blade, new gasket on, all the bolts are back up, but before I do that, I gotta put this guy back on, because it's on the back side. Probably won't show you that, but you know how to do it. These two bolts, I think they go here or here, but I'll figure it out. Turns out I left the bolts there ahead of time so I guess I have to figure it out nice so that was too bad to knock those suckers on there now it's ready to flip on I didn't bolt anything down here let's make sure the gasket was on straight and while I was doing that that key I held my finger on here while I pushed this on and got it in that groove that seems to be holding I can just put that bolt in there and bolt everything together so once again when you're sticking this in here just put your finger up there and push that key down to the drive shaft tube and you won't lose it. 
That slides in pretty easy. Just get a little tap with a rubber hammer and stick your bolt in. And now I'm gonna put that this guy back up the reverse. Right there's that bolt. And then I won't show that again on video, but just sticking a bolt in. Alright, so I got the new gasket on. This on. The only thing to watch out for is when you're putting this in here, that freewheel, that little smaller gear about that big, needs to rest inside this cover. And so line that up. And then uh, one more thing to do is uh, bolt this little guy back up down here. Right there. Uh, this little nut. After that, we're going to put the pull start on or we're going to give it a whirl. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. That'd be wonderful.